hide now, which you have noticed. So I'm honored to join you via video. I'd like to start by thanking everyone there, the researchers, lawyers, legislators, prosecutors, judges, leaders, who've all come together for this important benefit. I know you're also joined by former Governor Quee and former Supreme Court Justice Paul Anderson, so you have quite a group. The Council on Crime and Justice is a real Minnesota institution. We all came together a few years back to celebrate your 50th anniversary. You worked so hard through research, demonstration projects, advocacy, to make changes to the criminal justice system, to help us learn what we can do better. I certainly appreciated your work when I served as Hennepin County Attorney. Today, you're all joining together to recognize some very special people. The Council on Crime and Justice is Equal Justice Awards honor important accomplishments, contributions to our community. This year's awards go to State Senator Bobby Champion. Hi, Bobby. <laughs> Hello, Tim. And the research award also goes to Dana Swayze for your work in juvenile justice. They are all incredibly deserving award winners, and I consider at least the two legislators I know quite well as friends. But I was asked to speak for one purpose, and that is to honor my dear friend, former colleague, Bob Johnson. Bob, we're so glad that you're recovering and able to join everyone there to receive the Distinguished Service Award. Now, Bob and I first started working together when I was Hennepin County Attorney, and he was something of a mentor to me. I still remember when I was actually running for the office, I went and met with Bob. Um, and then, of course, I got to meet his dad, R.W., and together they passed on a fount of wisdom to me, uh, things that I would never have learned really from anyone else but those two. Uh, you know, Bob, you inherited something from your dad, and that was the legacy of good, the legacy of looking at a prosecutor's job as being a minister of justice. Uh, not just being a prosecutor, not just putting people in jail, but being a minister of justice. And you have devoted your life taking on his legacy, carrying on that mantle, to serve the people of Anoka, Anoka County, including 28 years as their county attorney. Now, one of my best stories about Bob, after he had given me so much advice, he was finally, he was up for election, he had a little bit of a race at some point, and he put his name <coughs> on the ballot as Robert M. A. Johnson, which was what he was known as, Robert Ma Johnson, and I believe he didn't even use any punctuation, because that's how he was known. Robert M. A. with no periods Johnson. So he ended up winning the race, but just barely. And he said, what happened? I said, we don't go as Ma Johnson. Okay, they <laughs> have no idea. Some of the voters may not actually know about the great Bob M. A. Johnson, and they think you're some strange guy who goes by Ma Johnson. <laughs> Luckily, in the next election, he did not do that anymore. But it was fun for me to give him advice for a chance. It was clear to all of us who had the good fortune to work with Bob that he devoted himself to improving the lives of others. He had an eye toward justice at all times, not just on his prosecution numbers, but on what's best for the community. And he wasn't afraid to take on the big challenges. He was instrumental in helping Minnesota become one of the very first states to create sentencing guidelines back in the 1980s. He was the president of the National District Attorneys Association. He was co-chair of the Constitution Project's National Rights to Council Committee. He could have just stayed in Anoka and done a great job in the office, but he took his wisdom and he took his service to the rest of the state and to the nation. Just a few years ago, he came out to Washington to testify before Congress about the importance of representation for those who are not able to afford counsel. <clears throat> Bob, through your work, you're making a difference in the lives of so many people who desire and deserve an unbiased criminal justice system that treats people with dignity and consideration. It's been an honor to work with you. I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, when I get back to Minnesota. And I thank you for all you've done to improve our criminal justice system in Minnesota and across the country. So here's to you and the other award winners. You know, we're working on the budget. Budget cuts. Thank you very much today. Thank you for everyone for coming together to recognize the contributions of these impressive individuals. Have a great time. <laughs> Thank you.
four years uh, is remarkable, but beyond that, uh, Bob's contributions to the Minnesota National Guard, the Bar Association at the, at the county, state, and national level, uh, providing counsel for the Minnesota Board on Judicial Standards, as well as the Minnesota Supreme Court Advisory Committee to review Minnesota Code of Judicial Conduct. Bob is a proud University of Minnesota alumnus, serves on the Foundation Board of Trustees. His commitment transcends state borders with his work on behalf of the American Bar Association, Criminal Justice Section, the American Law Institute, the Barry Institute of Justice in New York. Indeed, Bob Johnson is a respected international resource for his expertise and knowledge in these justice issues. Bob's work with Minnesota Sentencing Guidelines has had a national impact and indeed has become a national model used in many other states. Bob has been a gift to Minnesota and to criminal justice throughout the country. He has tirelessly worked to balance the scales of justice. He applies his belief in equity, rehabilitation, and second chances to all his professional endeavors, and he treats people with dignity and compassion. Bob once stated, what is justice? In a sense, it cannot be defined. It comes from inside people. It's the people who shape justice. Bob, we honor you today for this firm belief in the manner in which you've led your life, exemplifying the very best that we seek in our pursuit of equal justice. It's now my honor to present Robert M. A. Johnson with the 2013 Equal Justice Award for Service. his loss in a close race as sheriff of Anoka County. We could have done some good work there, David. <laughs> but it also reminded me that uh, chiefs are really important in our justice. There's always been what I call street diversion, where police are making judgments on the street about whether they're going to put somebody into the justice system or if they determine they're a low-risk individual, they're going to say, go forth and cut this stuff out. Now, that's a challenging decision for a police officer, but it's also a critically important decision. The easiest thing for them to do is just to dump it into the justice system. And that can be so destructive as, as we know. So to the degree that police can, can really get active in making those effective decisions on the front end, we're going to save a lot of people from being destroyed by our justice system, justice and courts. Uh, so I, I commend the work that the chiefs are doing, Dave, and give them my best and hope for more progressive work on the front end, trying to take care of these matters on the front end and not let them get into this this kind of system that chews people up so much. Um, how effective you are. Uh, so you're just out there doing the work, trying to do what you think is the right thing to do. And then to have an organization like this come along and, and give you an award, kind of affirming the work that I've done, it's really appreciated. prosecutor for 40 years and having led two national criminal justice organizations, both NDAA and the ABA criminal justice section, um, I will tell you and I tell you that our criminal justice system is broken. This isn't just my view. <coughs> Senator Leahy has on many occasions expressed his distress about our criminal justice system. And to his credit, Senator Jim Webb out of Virginia tried to pass a National Criminal Justice Commission Act to take a look at the criminal justice system that we have in the States. 
and unfortunately he wasn't that would come in and make recommendations as to how we can do things better and unfortunately he wasn't able to accomplish that I'm a little embarrassed to say the prosecutors were a big force in stopping that <coughs> NDAA and uh, no, I think they kind of like our little kingdoms. Uh, you know, people used to ask me, if I don't agree with your decision, where do I take it? And the simple answer is, the next election you get a chance to vote for somebody else. There is no appeal in the states from, in most states, from the decision of a prosecutor. Uh, so there are a lot of very thoughtful people who agree with my statement that our criminal justice system is broken. And not perhaps more important than Justice Kennedy, who at the ABA annual meeting, I think it was back in 03 or 04, gave a major address expressing his dismay about the state of our criminal justice system. The ABA created the Kennedy Commission, on which I was honored to serve. And I'll leave you with the thought of a person who, uh, testified before us, Representative John Conyers from Michigan came before us, and it really struck me what he had to say, because I thought, you know, I'm really, I was myself guilty of this, and it made me think about it, and I'll share it with you and encourage you to think about it. He said, essentially, a paraphrase, but this is pretty close. He said, it's nice that you all sit, sit up there amongst yourselves and talk about these wonderful things, but you've got to take it to the people. We don't get too far out in front of the people. And what that said to me was, stop just talking about it. You've actually got to do something. And I'm pleased to say the council has been doing something about it. And I encourage you to support the council in whatever way that you can so that you're actually doing something about this dysfunctional system that we have in the United States. Uh, and I particularly want to recognize Emily Baxter. Emily, where are you? <laughs> trying to have people understand that all of us have done things that if the NSA had actually brought it to the attention of the authorities, <laughs> <laughs> we would be held accountable for that. Uh, so thank you, Emily. And that's a part of what we all have to try to do, whether we support it financially or we support it in other ways. We actually have to stop talking and start doing to try to make this a better system. So thank you all.